This is Andy Tube, and I'm very happy to be starting my next series on Stella, a Singer Model 237 Fashion Mate. Stella, come on out. Don't be shy. <laughs> she's a little sh shy because she's filthy dirty and has been unattended for uh, maybe about 25 years. Hmm. But we'll take care of that. If you saw my my uh, coming attraction for this series, I, I gave all the information about the standard feature and sizes and so forth. But I, I want to add a couple of things here. Um, one, this is a Model 237. And there is uh, uh, another version of the 237 that has a darker paint, kind of grayish beige, and a lighter face plate. And some of them have a control knob right down here that's to lower the feed dog. And that M, uh, from what I can see uh, studying about this, is a, is a desired or popular model because of this uh, feed drop feature. Now, not all of what I will call the beige um, 237M models have that, but many do. And I have not seen any pictures or any place where this lighter colored with more of a, a goldish brown faceplate has a control knob. Um, it was made from about 1967 to 1972, and it was started at the factory in Monza in 1967. In 1968, Singer opened a new uh, factory because they outgrew the Monza factory in, in a uh, nearby suburb of a Monza and uh, the model was started being made there in 1968 and it's unclear how long the original factory made them starting in 1967 and probably at least part of 1968 and there also is some information that at the same time they built this other factory in 1968 they built a factory in uh, Brazil, and that factory also made many of the same models as in the Monza factory. And in fact, in 1990, Singer did a study and found out that the it Italian factory costs six times the amount as the Brazilian factory did to make a machine. And in 1992, the Italian factory was uh, shut down and later sold. So I'm, I'm not sure when exactly the model with the feed drop was added. But all of the ones that did not have that feed drop um, came with a feed cover, which is something uh, Singer had used for decades. And this one is very simple. Um, it's it's got a couple of hooks on the on the bottom side here, and it just uh, slides over the needle plate, and those hooks go go under the needle plate to stabilize it. I can do it one-handed here, leaning over the camera. Sorry. So you open the slide plate a little bit and you put this cover in slide it to the right so the hooks go under the needle plate and then you close the slide plate that allows fabric to go up and over a very common 
when you have the knob you didn't you didn't get the cover plate feed cover with that model because that knob actually lowered the feed dog by putting it at an angle below the needle plate one thing I found with with this one that I was able to obtain is that the um, slide plate spring that holds it on is is broken and I actually uh, saw another one of these for sale at, at, at a yard sale that had the same thing here broken so I've got to work on on that um, to to replace that but uh, let's see if I can turn this you know the the service guide said this weighs 28 pounds but I gotta tell you it feels <laughs> it feels a lot heavier than that I guess I'm used to the aluminum body uh, slant needle machines like 301 401 404 403 and the Rocketeers but um, cute the Singer model 99 I did was pretty heavy and it was a three-quarter size machine and this is considered full size so I guess that's why it seems heavier to me but it has a you know motor mounted in the back much the same way as the Singer model 99 did a, a motor bracket that attaches to the body and supports the, the uh, electric motor and then just a belt drive coming up to the hand wheel mm -hmm. and if I can keep turning this get these cords around here um, a little bit better view of the motor this motor on the outside looks a lot like the motor on the 99k and I'm going to find out. I'm going to find out how to take the motor off, open it up, and take a look at it. It also, like the 99K, has has an external um, light mounted in the rear. Of course, it, it looks different than the spotlight or the light on the 99K. But it's the same kind of uh, principle back there. So we'll be finding out. And... Uh, I'm going to open up the front nose cover and this top cover and show you a little bit inside and then tilt the thing back and show you underneath so you see a little bit more of the mechanisms, the mechanical part. But I, I wanted to mention this foot controller, this all metal foot controller. And uh, I said in my introduction slideshow that this was not original equipment manufacturer for Singer. And I said that because it's uh, marked on the back as Mer Mercury Electric Products Manufacturing Corporation made in the USA. And uh, where every other Singer machine I have done has a foot controller made by Singer. Even the even cute the model 99k so I assumed that this was a replacement for the original Singer foot controller but I am not so sure I've already gotten emails from some people that they had this exact same pedal and some said it on the 237 and a couple people had the 237M with the with the uh, feed dog drop so, I, I am not sure about that, and I'll have to retract that for now, saying it was not original equipment sold with the machine. And as I, if and when I can discover more, I will relay that to you. So, uh, let me open up the covers, and I'll be right back. Okay, let me show you this uh, top, top cover here. Now, these are plastic. So it's really not an all metal machine. It's these are plastic, and the nose cover is plastic. Um, the the body is iron steel, and most of the rods are iron and steel. But this is a, a top piece is plastic, 
and it's a little unusual for some that there's three screws there's two screws back here that screw into the body to hold the, the arm cover on and there's one screw that's up behind the presser bar pressure thumb screw and then I realized they they it's not centered here it's out to the ends with two because the bobbin winder arm and, and tire are in the middle and I'm, I'm going to show you that but I wanted to show you that there's three screws and this is what all, all three of them look like let's see maybe I can show it like that okay and then the nose cover is held on by one screw which I'll show you the nose cover but the screw for that is a little bit um, larger diameter and shorter in length than the arm cover screw and this is the nose cover it is a uh, plastic and it, it screws onto the front that one screw down here towards the bottom and the only other thing on it is this little pigtail wire thread uh, guide. Okay, so let me move these covers here. And let me move the broken slide plate. I'm going to see if I can uh, tilt this machine towards us. And give you a look under the cover there oh well that's not too good Let's see if I can grab a hand light here there we go so the the underside I mean it has an arm shaft and it has cranks that that go down to work the feed and the oscillating shaft but the uh, zigzag mechanism and um, needle bar vibrating bracket arm are pretty different from anything I've seen before. And uh, so I'm interested to get in here and, and, and see how it all works and what I can get apart and show you. And... Uh, you notice there's not any gears up here so some of the blogs and reviews and conversations and stuff talked about it's all the last all metal machine Singer made with all metal gears and uh, now there is the worm gear I can see down there that's that's cut into the main horizontal arm shaft uh, that would usually turn a camp stack for zigzag and I'll be showing you that later so it's not like a gear that's added to the machine it's it's the kind of a pinion or worm gear that's that is machined into the main arm shaft like like the other singers that I have done I can't show it to you now because it's covered up by a very different kind of a zigzag width controller so that's going to be kind of interesting let me see if I can set this down without breaking my workbench Ooh. Hmm. okay let me put this light put this light back here again and come around here now and uh, Boy, I, I should have gone to the gym a few times, I think, before I started working on this guy. So here is the nose end, or some people say the business end. And it has a pretty recognizable thread take-up mechanism with a crank behind it here. And the needle bar connecting link. And 
as the as the motor turns the hand wheel and the hand wheel turns the arm shaft and that uh, take up lever crank connects to the needle and makes the needle go up and down so I said okay that's you know I know about that but this uh, let me put the machine over into a wide stitch this vibrating back bracket here is uh, very very different than can I get it to vibrate here or not yeah there we go now it's moving a little bit where the other vibrating brackets that I've done have springs attached and uh, really the driving arm pushes the bracket one way away from the machine to make the needle swing and and then as the camshaft turns uh, pressure's taken off the arm and springs in the bracket push it back and then it's pulled the opposite way and when it's released the spring moves it back to the middle this I don't see any springs on so it, it's it's strictly the needle bar driving arm that makes that needle uh, zigzag or vib vibrating bracket um, swing back and forth and, and I can see that there's a bushing for it up here and a bushing for it down here and it's kind of odd to me because the pressure bar extension pin and pressure bar go go like right down there um, and the pressure bar goes through so I, I, I'm not sure how that mechanism works yet but we'll find out when I take it but you see the the vibrating bracket here has an extension that is the bushing for the needle bar and swings it you know together with the whole thing okay so we, we will find out I, I know that this little opening here is to allow for adjustment of the of the pressure bar uh, height so you can get access because I can see a screw right in there that that goes into the lifting bracket you know so that's to adjust the height and I'm sure that this screw right here is the clamping screw that uh, lets you secure the needle bar at the proper height and I see timing marks way up here on the needle bar where no, normally on most the uh, singers I've done except for the 99 the uh, timing marks are way down here so I'm I don't know I'm like man well, if the the timing marks you you line up with the top of this bushing that's part of the zigzag bracket or a vibrating bracket so we got to learn about that hmm and the the driving arm is like a rod it's a heavy steel round rod up here if you notice that when I tilted it up so I, I guess you know after working on machines from the uh, you know 40s and 50s and into the 60s to see this machine that was built in either late 60 or maybe 1970 to have different stuff um, and, I, and I'm gonna study it but it didn't it didn't look um, I expected it to look more modern than something built in the 50s and it doesn't appear to be so <laughs> I, I'm interested to, to discover more of that. Let me see if I can tilt this thing back now. This tilt, oops, it's got a little, whoop, can, can you see that? Yeah. This has a little plastic lever to keep it in place. But it does tilt back oof, farther than Cute did in this thing. I Cute, as soon as I got it about here, that was it. And if it the weight would make the whole box tilt up like that. 
but this can go flat and it's resting now on the bench behind the base of the case which I like I like that so it's got a different uh, hinge in here much more range on the hinge and then you can see the the uh, shafts and the oscillating shaft for the hook and everything that I showed in the um, coming attraction video but you know what you don't see down here is any gears there's no metal gears down here there's no gears uh, there's no plastic gears but there's no metal gears so when I had read so many comments about yeah all metal gears I thought well cool I kind of thought the Rocketeers the 500 and in, in the uh, 60s and maybe the very early 600 uh, had the last of the metal gears so that's it's cool that the fashion mate which was their low end this machine was about 90 bucks new in 1970 uh, I think 88 or 90 dollars I'll have to look up online what what that money's worth today but it was you know the the lower end and I thought wow this is great you know if even their base model so to speak had all metal gears but I don't see them <laughs> so you know it's a different kind of uh, rocking and I don't know if I can get yeah see so the you see how this uh, shaft um, this is um, oscillates the hook so it's going to be an oscillating hook not rotary it's going to tick tack back and forth but but remember that I have let me see if I can zoom in here huh? um, how do I zoom here? here? There we go. Remember I had the machine in zigzag, like stitch width 4? Well, watch, watch these mechanisms right here as I turn the hand wheel. Whoa! Do you see that? Do you see that shaft going like this? <laughs> I've never seen one do that before. Now it's coming back out. So I can see that the shaft is oscillating, the shaft itself. I mean, I can watch the, the you know, bushings here and watch the set screws back and forth. But I've never seen um, a hook shaft move left and right like this during the the needle stroke well wow, that is something to me so uh, the rock and lift shaft for the feed they don't move back and forth it's this to move back and forth and and it looks like the whole hook is moving and, and the whole housing for the hook so I'm like, wow, is the needle bar swinging left and right? Or is it moving the, the hook? Or is, does it move the hook in tandem with it? I, I don't remember seeing that. So, okay, I guess that right there is going to be enough to have fun exploring the Model 237. Mm -hmm. And for those of you... Let's get Stella back up right here. The blood's all rushing to her head, right? <laughs> okay, thank you, Stella. So, uh, uh, I said Stella, I named her Stella because Stella is a star of the fashion mate. Um, being made in Monza, Italy, and Stella is, uh, can be an Italian lady's name and it means star. So, I named her Stella. So those of you who, who have watched um, some of my other series on other machines, um, I figure, you know, how many times can you watch me clean a machine, right? <laughs> I don't want to lose my audience, so I've decided I am going to 
do a whole different method here. And I've tested this a little bit with cleaning some other machines that I have done for customers. I don't do many, but I had a couple customers pay me to restore machines. And uh, I tried some different methods. And basically what I'm going to do is take very, very few parts of this off. And I'm going to clean the machine first. And then we're going to start, you know, taking off the needle bar, putting it back on. How does that work? The vibrating bracket, all this linkage up here. How does all this stuff work? But I still constantly get emails from people saying they don't want to or they're physically unable to do all this dismantling that I do. And they're also like, hey, the, the, the machine works okay. I don't have to take it apart and put it back together. It's like not broken. But man, it stinks or it's all dirty or, you know, I got rust here and there. I just want to clean it. I want to get all that stuff out or as much as possible and get, you know, it all cleaned up and, and waxed and sh shiny and smelling good. And then I want to use it, <laughs> you know, I want to sew. So I'm going to try that this time. Um, I haven't even decided how much I'm going to take off, but I'm going to try and take off as like I'm going to take the motor and light off because it's very easy. I might take the hand wheel off, um, you know, but but uh, so it's going to be a little different. First, it's going to be kind of like a streamlined cleaning, quick cleaning method, and then I'll start taking stuff off and we'll discover everything we ever wanted to know about the model 237 that does not have the feed drop. Thanks for uh, watching this first video. I hope I have enticed you to come back and watch the series. And if you're in groups or you know people who have the 237, you might give them a link that we're starting a new series here that they may have an interest in watching to learn more about their machine or ask questions or bring up issues with. Okay? So, hopefully, I'll see you for the next video. Take care. Oh.